Hey, Saints and Aints, how are you? Good with y'all. Okay, so we're here, a lot of testosterone uh, here on this episode. Uh, it's Preston Perry. So <laughs> we have Ezekiel and Preston here because, one, they're going on tour together. Um, uh, what's the name of the tour? What y'all doing? The We Need to Talk Tour. Yeah. Okay, what's that about? What y'all talking about? Because men don't uh, men don't usually talk. So what are we talking about? <laughs> That's exactly it. I, I, love that. I, I think the tour basically is was curated to address a lot of the the stuff floating around in our culture uh, about relationships, about one men and women relationships, but a, a myriad of topics. But I think ultimately we, what we want to what we want to see is that I I believe and we believe that it it is, it is a huge attack on men and women relationships, and I think. Um, the, one of the reasons why is because the enemy doesn't want the world to see God through how we love and treat and see one another, right? Mm-hmm. And so we want to bring a lot of these issues to the forefront so that we can give a biblical perspective and help people see, man, this is this is more of a gospel issue than we think it is. Um, and so uh, we're going to talk about a lot of different things. You're so uh, eloquent when you describe that. I appreciate that. <laughs> I want to go. Shut up. You, I want to go. So, yeah, that's basically what the tour is about um, in, in a nutshell. So we have known Ezekiel as long as we've known each other. So wow. yeah. what's that, 2009? We all met on the same night. Yeah. You're welcome, guys. Yeah, um, <laughs> 2010. Yeah, was, no, I think it was 2010, right? Yep, 2010. 2010. Yeah, I did My Life is a Stud. Preston did Soul Ties. You did... Did you do All Almost Save? Almost Save, yeah. 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 Wow. And, and I was so jealous. <laughs> Why? Or was I, I don't think I was jealous. I wasn't jealous, actually. Let's be clear. I was jealous on your, of your second poem. Oh. But I was impressed yeah. and intrigued because I was like, he's like a rapper poet guy. Yeah. yeah. You know? <laughs> I literally, that's what I was. <laughs> Tell us about that. Well, I, I was battle rapping in high school and I was asked to do a spoken word when I did not know how to do spoken words. So I just did what I could do. I was in admiration of spoken word, Christian spoken word. So I just gave it a shot that night and I actually joined the ranks of you guys. <laughs> Shut wow. up, man. <laughs> but that is, that is dope when you think about it because um, essentially that was the start of all three of our ministries because yeah, this ministry that we sure. was working with, they had this big, big event in LA and they would pick the top three poems of the night and our poems, your poem, my poem, your poem was, was picked. Mm. Yeah. And that's essentially how we started to travel across the country. That's deep. And became friends. Yeah. Think about that. And no so, marketing team, no nothing. They was literally spining videos off YouTube and saying, we want y'all around the world. And we're getting booked like every weekend. Yeah. Yes. So Which weird. is so scary. We was getting paid. Think about it. We were just going to random churches. For yeah. real. We were vetting these people. We was getting paid $50, $50. a show. <laughs> $100. Honestly, you gave me gas money. <laughs> wow. I was content with that. It's so crazy. Those are the good old days. But yeah. who would have known? I, I just think it was so divine. Who would have thought? I and I, I want to say this because I'm in front of y'all and we on mics. Oh, I know what you're like, saying. Like I, I am so grateful that mm-hmm. I befriended, and even on the um, the creative level, have been able to be privileged to perform and be connected with you guys. And I consider you guys some of the greatest lyricists, poets, Aww. and teachers Aww. of the Word of God in the world. Aww. The fact that like. <sighs> That like God saw no God saw fit to use us in that particular time and connect us because yeah. just because He used us and we're in the same place that's true doesn't mean we had to be connected so Absolutely. I think that's amazing and I want to give you you your props we appreciate this. you for giving us money ah, no, no, because what no, I was no, just no, about no. to say that no what people don't understand so Ezekiel created Poets and Autumn tour that yes. we did I don't know four Six or years. five years yeah. and that is what helped us buy this house hello. That is what helped us like get a start when it comes to even like owning a rental property. Like yeah, you, yeah. you helped wow. us make money. Wow. I, I mean, we gave the gospel and stuff like that. <laughs> but like we wanted a house. Oh. And so we, we appreciate you. Amen. Yeah. Praise yeah. God. So, you know? Yeah, God use you. We yeah. don't need you no more. So if I ever need a place fine. to stay, yeah, I got I got uh, some. the lies you tell. <laughs> like Leno and all them people. Jay Leno. Yeah, all them. Yeah. I'm sitting on the corner because I'm gonna interview y'all, right? Because I'm not male. I identify as woman. Yeah. And <laughs> I'm kidding. That's offensive. Uh, I am a woman. And so I just I just want to interview y'all you were about created as a woman. Oh come on. Ah, Genesis 127. <laughs> I just want to talk through just masculinity, fatherhood, manhood, Kevin Samuels, whoever. Ooh, um, RP. Peace is debatable. But yo. 
Yeah. I'm just saying, not everybody goes to heaven. <laughs> we go. We're we, not universalists. But in God's <laughs> great kindness, he is able to redeem anybody. He is. Anywho, so what is what is on y'all's heart as it relates to men, masculinity? I'll just, I'll make the umbrella very wide. What is on your heart? Mm. Hmm. You want to go first? I just want to say, man, um, I think it's really important that we're having this conversation. I think from afar, a lot of people look into the lives of Preston. They look into my life and see our families and see us thriving. And we are thriving. I'm not going to put our quotations on that. We're thriving. Uh, We love our wives and, you know, we have our struggles. But whatever the case may be, from the outside looking in, it seems like it's easy. Seems like we, we understand it. I think for the most part, we're figuring it out. Yeah. However... I think it's really important that we put our ears to the heartbeat of the culture, to the men and to the women and, and understand what's actually happening right now, because I feel like there's extreme attacks happening. And the more we disconnect and find comfort in the nucleus of our families and in Mm -hmm. our marriages and with our kids, we'll be more disconnected from what God is calling us to. And I believe he's calling us to his kingdom to build specifically men as men and to share our experience, to share the insight and wisdom as we figure it out, as as he's giving knowledge, wisdom. And I look at you as somebody who is extremely wise and I believe God is granting us wisdom. And if we don't actively pour in to men in these, in this particular pivotal season, Mm -hmm. I think that we're being grossly negligent and irresponsible with what God has given us. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Um, this last couple of months, I've I've really felt a, a burden um, to pour into the lives of young men more um, because we we you've said it uh, and we've said it before, but I really believe that there is an an extreme attack on men hmm. um, to displace us, to confuse our roles as leaders, um, to discourage us um, from being in community. Um, f- making men feel misunderstood about their their call, even in their spiritual giftedness, and just even relationally, like you know, men, men, uh, you know, have communicated to me that they felt torn down, that they, uh, you know, in churches when they are not ready to get married, they feel like man, like it's almost like it's an indictment on my character because I'm not ready to say I do to somebody. Uh, and so it's it's just so many things that I feel like we go through because you know um, God has called us to 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 be leaders, and so you know the enemy knows you know if you want to uh, to attack a family unit or even a body, you cut the head off the snake. And so uh, yeah, and so I I told Jackie I, I had a, I had an event in D.C. Um, last week, and every single guy that walked up to me was either crying out for discipleship. One 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 guy came to me and literally said, "I asked five people to disciple me, and they all said no." And then he started crying, and he was like, "You talk about discipleship, and I follow you because you talk about discipleship, but nobody would disciple me." Another guy walked up to me and said, uh, uh, "He just got married, uh, and he doesn't know what he's doing. His wife got pregnant on a honeymoon like we did." And he said, "But I don't know no solid churches, and I feel this spiritual pressure." to get my, my, my family in, in, in a church. So he has all of this burden as a leader, right? Mm-hmm. And so a lot of times these guys be out here really stressing themselves out. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it, it just, it just they, they look for other things to, to relieve that stress because they just need help. And so, I, yeah, my heart really goes out for, for married men, you know, single men, all men, really. I'm wondering... Y'all have, you've been in Christ your whole life. You've been in Christ about 15, 16 years. Oh, six. When you examine, I guess, even the landscape of, of many of the men that you have conversations with, one, are they your age? So are these struggles dependent on per generation or is it just kind of like across the board? It's across the board. It's man. across the board. N- yeah. With that, is there, do you see like the, I guess the culture shifting in a particular way? Like even when you think about the discouragements or the temptations or the fears, are they the same fears that men have always been dealing with? Or in this era, culturally, is there a different intensity to it? Because I'm ignorant of it. Yeah, what's crazy to me is I, I, I feel like my men audience publicly has grown 
um, in a particular type of way. Because I think we all initially had the same audience where we had like black church and that was older men. We had the older generation and the younger generation. And then me and Jackie start doing, you know, other things. But then when I got bold TV, when I started to do evangelism videos, men kind of start my my men audience grew. <laughs> And that's when I started getting all of these younger guys coming to me. And I'm like, yo, these men out here are struggling, mm. you know? And this not even just, when you say culturally, I'm thinking like, because I have white guys, white men, like it's not even like, you know, black church. Anymore. I don't even mean black. I mean, you know, like for example, even among women, one attack might be, oh. you know, t you have to modify your body in such a way to be appealing. Oh, okay. I, I don't think that now. was a thing in 1991. Right. Oh, yeah. And so is there a particular like cultural kind oh, okay. of I get wind what you're saying. that men are being like subjected to? Yeah. I think it's the disease of social media. Social media uh -huh. has its uh, benefits, but I think social with the benefits, it, we've been exposed to so much more. And so there's this com comparison uh, issue that a lot of men are dealing with to see men that are young uh -huh. and successful or to see people projecting success, mm. projecting good marriage, projecting perfection, it intensifies that pressure. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, That's man. Good. When they find out our ages, it's just like, dang, I'm 35. What do I got? I don't got yeah. no kids. I don't got this going on. Mm -hmm. And so it intensifies that. And on, on, on top of that, it also kind of heightens this desire for more. And not in a not in a way that it makes me say like, you know, no one should want more, but it's almost like when the world opens up in a way like that. Back in the day, in the 1940s, in your neighborhood, if you saw a beautiful woman, that would be the one beautiful woman you saw for yeah. six months. Yeah. Now, it's like, <laughs> six months. there are millions of beautiful yeah. women. Wow. And they're getting with regular guys. Yeah. And so it's like my eyes start, you know, my uh, eyes yeah. don't cease to be open. It's just like, okay, so I got to do this. I got to flex. I got, and so we're getting all this information and we're being bombarded by wrong information. Yeah. So I think confusion yeah. now is at yeah. a high. Yeah, because I, I think wow. what social media has done, social media has made, because hmm. social media really hasn't created a lot. It just made everything loud mm. and made everything just like in your face. And so like men, we have a lot of options, but I think a lot of men, are being compared to mm -hmm. unrealistic expectations. Yeah. Who's doing the comparison? Like <sighs> when you say that, what do you mean? Uh, one, I, I I think when so I've seen particular sites or particular pages where if a standard is presented on social media, you see a slew of comments like, "That's why these men ain't out here doing this," or "This is not a real man," and and that's one thing I hate. Okay, I hate when people would would take one thing that a man does and not make them a real man as mm -hmm. if you can define who they are by yeah. one action right god defines us as men like mm -hmm. one mm -hmm. and so not the culture not your standards like god gives us that standard and so i i, I think you know you know and i think the same thing could be said about women i think social media allows people to pull from these sources and yeah. then compare men to what they think men are through social media. And it's just like, no, like what we need to learn how to be men is in local communities of discipleship, not through social media. And so mm -hmm. I think social media just makes things really loud, muddy. And I think a lot of men who are not disciple can be affected by social media in that way, mm -hmm. by listening to voices in the culture, mm -hmm. um, who's telling, telling you who you are from afar and not listening to people in close proximity to build you up, mm. you know, and I think. And, and that's a good point because every man is being discipled. Yeah. But what voice is discipling them? Yeah, yeah. If you're bombarded with all of these messages, you're going to form some type of ideology. You're going to form some type of perspective of God, which is a theology yeah. based on these multiple voices. And so if that is not like, I'm getting these same voices. I'm on the same social media, but I have discipleship, mm. which allows me to filter the voices that I hear. Yeah. But if you don't have that filtration system, yeah. then you're being discipled effectively by poison. Yeah, because yeah. I, I, when I talk to men lately, it's just like, you, you're coming to me with all these issues, but I wonder how much of these issues have you learned from in the context of your local community mm. and how much you have you gotten from the toxic stuff in this culture. Mm -hmm. Maybe you need to get off social media, you know what I'm saying, and really find somebody who can walk with you. Uh, but to answer your question on another thing, another thing that men have told us lately, 
um, is they feel like they're that that the the culture and society is trying to like over feminize men. Hmm. Um, they feel like um, I don't know if you remember the conversation we had with yeah. with the with the guys the other other week, but they was just like you know one I think there has been a a, a, a overemphasis of therapy of men sh- sharing their you know um, their personal feelings, but they feel like a lot of women in the church, um, you know. Uh, what's the word? Give a crutch to I, what? What they were kind of basically saying was. It feels like the church is catering to women and ignoring the voices and needs and concerns of men. That the messages are catering to 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 women. The theology that is being preached is catering to women and almost kind of marginalizes men, which almost forces them into the arms of this red red pill community that says, "Finally, we're being heard. Yeah. Finally, someone is speaking to my pain." Because when you hear someone like Kevin Samuel speak. You know that he's been hurt and he's been jaded in some way. And so for every broken man Mm -hmm. that wants to get it off his chest, and I've been I've been there too, man, a girl that really did you dirty, and now I can form an ideology and understanding that that speaks to my pain. Mm -hmm. Like I'm going to navigate to that because the pastors are not speaking to my pain. Mm -hmm. Um, all the everyone else that has these ideal relationships are not speaking to my pain. So why not someone who finally says, "Yeah, you're not all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you shouldn't be rejecting me. Yeah, you shouldn't have, uh, you know, did me dirty." And so it makes it so much easier to gravitate to. And let me say this real quick, babe. Let me say this real quick. One one reason why I think this this was possible is because I think people started to catch wind that if you can, even in the Christian community, if you can capture the heart of a, of the female audience, you can make a lot of money. You can be very lucrative. Everybody knows that the female audience buys in and they're committed, right? Especially in the church. And so I think a lot of men started to feel like, man, like they know if they can if they can cater to women in this way that, you know, the women are the highest consumers of books. Women are the highest consumers of a lot of like, even our poetry event, our Mm. tour, it was what Mm. 65%, 70% women. Right. And so I think P I think some men have felt like because of that, like, you know, a lot of times the church has catered more to, to women than they have to men. And I think in some ways that argument is, is, you know, um, there's truth. It's, to it. it's, it's understandable. Not, right. Yeah. And I think it's some, some truth to it. I think the reason why, you know, the, the whole red pill community and these men voices have been so popular is because it catered to hurt, misunderstood men who felt like the culture and society was stripping their voice away. Wow. Right. And they was able to disciple these dudes in a lot of toxic ways to be quite frank, but they still felt heard. It reminds me of Hebrew Israelism. It's like, if I can appeal to the young black man in America who, who, um, who's, a, who's, who's frustrated every time, time a black body pops up on it, on the, on the internet, um, I can feed them our truth because it, it appeals to their emotion even at the expense of truth. I think what's really intriguing about that perspective is that, hypothetically speaking, if the church is primarily catering to women, it it could be also because women have statistically been the church's primary audience. Mm -hmm. Because statistically speaking, women usually make up more of the church membership than men do. That's, That's true. But what's intriguing about it is that most men are the pastors, and so I, I guess my question would be, what even is the reason that men aren't a part of churches? Because the Nation of Islam doesn't have a problem getting men. But I just had a conversation last week with a man who was, he's the leader of his uh, men's ministry. And he was like, I, men don't want to join. They don't want to participate. They don't want to be active. He was at glory. And he was like, your women are so excited to be here. I have to beg men to come to Bible study because they feel like if I just came to church with my wife, that's enough. And so maybe women are being catered to because women are more thirsty. Is that wrong? Th- I have a lot of thoughts. I want to hear it. I want to say something about it before you I have jump a lot of in. Thoughts. I think the nature of women allows them to be attracted to the model of the church and the way the church celebrates and idealizes the the 
person on the stage and the person on the mic. I think in that type of scenario, we need to pay attention. That. No, right. <laughs> hmm. Pay attention to scriptures. It says there are parts of the body that require the type of attention mm. that the seen parts don't require. And I think we miss that to recognize that men are drawn to places where they feel valued or another word for that, where they feel needed. Mm. If I go into a space and everybody celebrates the pastor, they listen to the pastor, I come in and I can disappear. I could die and nobody would know. Uh. And so I'm not needed here. In fact, the reverence and respect only goes to one place. I think if we as a church, as a people, men and women mm. begin to recognize that it truly is a body That's and so pay good. attention to the giftings. When a man comes into that place, how can he serve this community? How can he serve? How can he be mm. recognized as an individual that is coming to contribute value into this place? Even if he never steps on a mic, even if he's never seen, could the church incubate and uh, uh, create forums where that men hmm. could be used and recognized. See, the scripture talks about recognition in the sense that there is a special attention. There's a particular type of uh, of care hmm. or, or attention or reverence that goes to the part that is less seen. And I think we got that wrong in the church. That's it repels men. Yeah. Trust me. Let me just let me just say this. So that, I, I, I agree exactly with what Ezekiel said, but. I also think that we may underestimate how much men want community, right? Because a lot of times a, a woman can go in a church body and, and be excited about the worship, to be excited about, you know, uh, the, the past, the preaching. And, and, it, and it, this, it, there's an excitement. And I don't want to, I want to make it seem like women are just like emotional, right? Because they, I, I think a lot of women in the church love the Lord and love the body, right? But I think men want connection. Men want more. More men want discipleship and community than we think. But mm-hmm. I think our our churches we don't cultivate those type of environments, right? Yeah. And so, for example, the the same guy that I talked talked about that came up to me after my show in D.C., he said they start going to a church, and he was like, his wife still loves the church, but he doesn't want to go to a church. Why? Because no man in the church want to disciple him. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's not like he doesn't want to go to the church. He wants to be the he wants mm-hmm. to learn. Right. And so the way God has wired men, God has wired us to be leaders. Mm-hmm. God has wired us to think in a certain way. And so if we're coming into an environment and the church is not equipping us to learn how to be men inside of our home, what is the need for? We would, don't care about worship. Would, would you? <laughs> we want to we want to learn how to be men. Would you say that when men come into bodies and these are all, I don't want to generalize because I'm sure there are local bodies and local communities that are doing this very well. But I think, uh, would you say that the men that get attention are the men who are gifted communicators? Yes. Usually? Yes. Okay. Yeah, for the, sure. The men that, yeah. I had that in my brain, so I'm glad you you, you said that. One flesh. Gifted, yeah. Gifted communicators are those who are celebrated in, in church atmospheres. Well, singers, the, the worship leader. That's true. And, and the pastor. The pastor. Yeah. The communicators. Yeah, that's it. You know, and in some cultures, the armor bearers are like, you know, second in command or mm-hmm. whatever. Mm-hmm. But then men are just there. Mm-hmm. A lot of men are just there. And so, like, even the, you know, the young man, he wanted, um, he wanted discipleship. You know what I'm saying? So now if you look at him and his his marriage, he may look like one man, another man who who doesn't want to go to a local local body. But I, actually he's looking for something deeper. Mm-hmm. And so I think that we need to identify the men in our churches. And I think the the weight of the responsibility falls on, on men. It says like how can we pay attention to to the to the needs of these men and also, you know, how how can we come alongside them and disciple them? And women, how can we encourage? Like, I don't want to just just leave it up to men to disciple men, but also leave it up to the to the women to not flirt with the the first guy that you feel is is cute when he comes to church, but to to just speak life into that man. Mm-hmm. Let him know like you're valued in this community, you're needed in this community. Mm-hmm. Not to stroke his ego, but to encourage him, right? Because a woman's voice is very powerful. Well, maybe what a what a woman could 
actively do is be a bridge to connect that man with other worthwhile men for sure you know? and so, so instead of you being the primary source of encouragement that's cool but he needs a brother yeah he needs a father in the faith that's and so true. it's like me actively saying hey i've seen you here for a week like you want me to connect you with my my friend or my husband or whatever whatever but i think that becomes hard when you don't even have a church body where that's a cultural yeah ideal that's what that's the problem yeah. i'm gonna let's just be honest in this we're in america <laughs> we all chasing the dream chasing the hustle most yeah. people simply it's not in our nature to see a man that comes in and says i'm about to take this brother under my wing <laughs> and i'm going to encourage him and i'm going to consult with him and he could call look take my number call me anytime <laughs> We're not doing it, bro. Let's just be honest. I think the problem is not that the... <laughs> he said, call me in. And here's the truth about it. At least that man can identify the lack and his need. Mm. Yeah. Most men don't desire discipleship because they don't know that that's what they need. Yeah. They, they're they feeling and they're trying to fix and medicate, self-medicate with their vices. And so the dude that's out there smashing these women needs discipleship but does not know he needs it. Come on yeah. here. And so how do you deal with that? Well, there have to be men that are actively pursuing these men. And I, I truly believe it falls on those who know. Mm. It falls mm -hmm. on those who are equipped. And this is why, you know, I started this whole Band of Brothers thing. The whole idea behind it was I started off me trying to do relationship stuff and trying to match women with men. And I realized it was collapsing. Why? Because it starts with men knowing who they are. Yeah. Before I don't even want to connect a woman with a man that doesn't know who he is. Yeah. So I was like, real. okay, my focus needs to shift on these men, but to develop these men so that they can chase after men. And at this state that we're in, it ain't even one on one anymore. Mm. If you if if you have some type of clarity and you're learning and you're being discipled, you need about ten. Yeah. You need about sure. ten young men that you're pouring into. That's yeah. that's where we're at. It's that yeah. desperate. I, I I just told my wife uh, last week that uh, the Lord had been telling me to, to to disciple this particular young man that's in our life. You know him or mm -hmm. whatever, mm -hmm. and I was avoiding it because I was like, I just don't want to. I just don't want to disciple nobody right now. Nobody else. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm on the phone with such and such, dealing with his problems, and yeah. you know what I mean, yada yada yada. But I just felt like the Lord was like, no, like tell ask this dude, do you want um to do you want me to disciple him or whatever? And I did, and he just got emotional. And it also just made me feel bad that I didn't act sooner. <laughs> I was like, wow. I should have been asked this dude. But yeah. dudes want to be discipled. And I, I think that if we develop a co I know I talk about discipleship a lot because I think that God wants the church to 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 grow a culture of discipleship. But I think if we develop it. We'll see a lot more men in the church. We mm. would, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so I, 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 yeah, I think we just need more discipleship. What has the nation of Islam, Hebrew Israelism, mm. and what you know, is my it, red, red pill community? Is that yeah. what it's called? Yeah. Uh, what are they doing right that the church isn't? Yeah. So the nation of Islam, their whole goal. I mean, the like the. the the nation of Islam looks completely different than the 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 American church. When mm. you go in the nation of Islam community, the men are at center and the women are kind of in the background mm. um, in a lot of mm. ways. And so like in a, in a church, it's the pastor and then it's like all of these women, you know. Mm. And so like they just do a really good job of instilling dignity, worth. Uh, they're, they're ne they feel like they're necessary for their community. Um, you, you, you met the, the nation of Islam people that I've been building with by our mm -hmm. house, um, on the way, um, from church. Um, and this man is 23. He's by our house. He's out there every single day, you know, pat, um, selling bean pies, passing out fruit. And every single time I'm about the Walgreens, I'm talking to this cat. And every single time I talk to him, he talks to, to, to me about the, the state of the black man in America and how the nation of Islam is the only thing in the world that has given the black man a voice. That's what he believes. He believes that the nation of Islam has given the black man a voice to be leaders in their home, leaders in their community, right? And in a lot of ways, let's not cap. They are. They mm. are leaders, in, 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 and they lead well. Mm. They, mm. they lead well in the sense of serving their community, okay. right? 
And so when I'm over there by Walgreens, with Walgreens, I mean the the lady that he's helping to their to, to her car every single day mm. looks at him as a leader. Got it. Right. Yeah. Right. Looks at him as a as a as a pillar in this community. Mm -hmm. The whole time they're giving somebody a false Jesus. Mm. Right. They up there with with signs saying that Minister Farrakhan is the new Messiah. Yeah. Right. And so I think that's the problem when the Christian church do not do a good job of building up leaders we make other religions look like they're true by the way they build up men mm. wow. and so I, I i just think that it's 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 an attack of the enemy it's really strategic mm. and to the church's defense it is real easy to build up quote unquote leaders when you serve a false god i don't think the spiritual mm. opposition is mm. nearly as much yeah. right they yeah. don't have that spiritual warfare a aspect so what we have real demons like oh they have the real gospel we're gonna go after <laughs> That's how they man. sound bro right yeah. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna really go after their man right <laughs> yeah. and so i i, I, I don't want to boo boo on the church in that in that aspect yeah but i, I do want to point out the fact that man we need to pay attention to how minister farrakhan is on the Breakfast Club, low key, like like being a voice for the hip hop generation because he connects with these 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 rappers in a way that a, a Christian pastor doesn't. It's a form of discipleship mm. um, that 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 if we just learn how to how to tap into in the Christian church, the Christian church can be really powerful if we focus on building up men in a particular way. Mm. And it can't be a subset; like it literally has to be our focus to call back men because with the breakdown of men, you have the breakdown of the marriage and you have the breakdown of the family. You have the breakdown of the community and thus the breakdown of the church. Mm -hmm. And so we want to see the church thrive and we're fighting to, to feed the, the leaves without addressing this root cause. And I think this, like you said, it's a spiritual thing for sure. The enemy has historically biblically attacked the, the boy yeah. in scripture. And for, for what reason? Because we know that, that God has called that man to be a leader, to be a pillar, to be a backbone in the community and in the church. So I think it should be a 911. Like we all need to put our hands like women can't sit back and say, yeah, get these men together. Nah, it's like we all need to be praying. Yeah. We all need to be rallying and we all need to be celebrating these efforts, making noise about these efforts and creating culture around discipling Man, it's important. And then this is the reason why I'm excited about this tour. Mm. And this is not to plug the tour, but if it does plug it, great. Amen. But um, <laughs> the reason why I'm excited about this tour is because I think men, we are going to address some toxic things in the culture concerning men. I don't, I don't, I don't want to um, act like we're not. But it's not going to be a place where men or women are torn down at all. Amen. But I, I do think men need to stop hearing how how much they suck, <laughs> right? And I think they need to, to to know that man. Some of the ideologies and the, some of the some of the things that you adopted from the the culture is problematic. But man, here is how the Lord wants to shift you. And I feel like if we can point them to to a a, a body uh, in a community that can raise them up, I I really think that we'll see a lot of men be encouraged. Because I, I don't think what men need is only correction. I think that they need to be corrected but also build up in the faith and i think that this tour would do that when we point out because i i think a lot of times we see the issues but we don't see the the root manifestation of these issues yeah and so that the root manifestation is that not these men are trash these men don't want to commit these men are bogus these men are this it's no it's deep hurt it's deep woundedness it's deep deception it's deep you know pro it's uh, all of these issues that i feel like we never get to the root cause mm. and so you know, men just hear how much they suck, 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 because people are only focused on the manifestation of a lot of the foolishness that they putting out there mm -hmm. and them not going to church, but they're not getting to the nitty gritty. Like, why Like why do you feel rejected? Why don't you feel That's hurt? Important. And so I feel like this tour is going to do a good job of getting to that and how can we build them up and how can we have the church come alongside men to, to make them feel like they're wanted in the community. That's good. So Kevin Samuels. Uh, when uh -oh. he when he popped out, I feel like he kind of and I could be wrong, but it feels like he opened the door for a lot of podcasts, a lot of content that feels hyper masculine. And by I mean hyper masculine, I mean inordinately um, unbiblical kind of this this establishing of 
leadership in a way that feels like you're superior yeah. or dominant in a way that doesn't look like Jesus. Mm. And I can, I think, listen to y'all, I can see how that is appealing mm. because it's a, it's a way to reestablish dignity and leadership that may not actually include gentleness and humility, mm-hmm. right? So I guess my question would be, can y'all define for us what masculine leadership actually is? So that people have a vision for it, which also also corrects even wrong visions or understandings of leadership that aren't right. Does that make sense? What I'm trying to ask? Yeah, yeah you you explain that really well. Uh, I don't. You just don't want to answer the question. <laughs> um, one, like, what are they supposed to be looking for? Because if they got all these options and these alternatives, like some men might think that's authentic leadership for you to be in control of everything that your wife does and for her to not have any say about what she wears or where she goes when like that's actually abusive. Yeah. One, but, one, I want to just say this. I'm not saying that. Okay. So I'm not saying before I answer that, what, 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 uh, like biblical masculinity looks like, I want to just address the Kevin Samuels thing. And before I say this, I don't want to, I don't want to make it seem like, that if you're not married and leading a home, that you cannot give certain advice, right? Um, that you cannot point to men in any in any aspect, right? But when we look in scriptures, one of the qualifications of being a leader in the church, right, of voicing the community, right, an, an elder, elder, right, is being able to lead your home well, means wife, children, and then that's how we know that you have the the right qualifications to be a voice in your local community, your church, an elder, right? Um, and I think a lot of times when when we hear men, don't listen to what a man says. Listen to what a man models. And Kevin Samuels wasn't even married, first of all, right? So he wasn't even, like, he didn't even show us, even through social media, that he knew how to lead a family. But he was, he was, he was, pouring, he was pouring all of this, 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 this marriage advice, right? Um, I think, I don't know the man personally, but it seemed like out of his woundedness. And so a lot of wounded men cl- uh, flocked, I believe, to Kevin Samuels because he catered to their woundedness, mm-hmm. which was automatically problematic, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Which he probably said some true things, right? Mm-hmm. And people, oh, well, that was true. It's like, false theology is always going to be sprinkled with a little bit of truth, mm-hmm. one. Um, but I think the 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 main person to look to look at is Jesus, and Jesus wasn't married, but he was the son of God. So he, he right, yeah, right, and so he was he was married to to us, his church. Mm. And I think what Jesus did, Jesus came and modeled Christ like sacrificial love that was both gentle and firm when he needed to be, mm-hmm. right? Um, and so he was he was kind, especially when he treated the way he treated women. Mm-hmm. And so when Ephesians 5 tells us to, to husbands, love your wives like Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, I say this all the time, Christ loved the church before the church loved him. Mm-hmm. And he modeled Christ-like sacrificial love even when the church rejected him. Mm-hmm. And so I think what, what, what Christ-like um, masculinity looks like is it is, it is both lion and lamb. Mm-hmm. Um, it is both firmness and gentleness. And so it is not, it is not one extreme over the other. It mm-hmm. is not being overly, you know, um, um, uh, emotional. Um, and it is not being overly domineering, not being domineering at all. It mm-hmm. is like, how can I lead my home? How can I be a leader in my community by one leading by example, mm-hmm. By loving people in a gentle and a kind way and allowing my voice to be heard in gentle and respectful ways. And so I think a lot of times in the culture, it's either one side or the extreme. You mm-hmm. have to be extremely passive to be accepted by some, mm-hmm. or you have to be extremely domineering mm-hmm. to feel like you gotta be accepted by women. You should teach. Um, <laughs> and, teach and, and but but I think Jesus came and balanced and showed us this 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 beautiful balance. Mm-hmm. Of 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 correcting the Pharisees, being firm with truth, being mm-hmm. being bold in how he how he uh, proclaimed his father, mm-hmm. but at the same time, crying mm-hmm. when Lazarus, like weeping when Lazarus died, mm-hmm. right, showing this vulnerability and this and this and this and this this openness, right. And so I think he balanced both of them, and mm-hmm. I, so I think when we look at Jesus, we see that God wants us to be both this lion and lamb mm-hmm. um, in a beautiful way. And I think uh, one of the things that was beautiful, man. That was excellent. One of the things that has risen in this whole red pill 
understanding is finding women that are easier to manipulate, to control. Yes. A lot of men are being pushed. To, they, they call them passport bros. If you guys know, I'm introducing all types of what? stuff. They're saying, hey, women in America are difficult. Go ahead, go across the seas and find a woman that will cook clean and will never talk back that will allow you to get other women because they understand that having multiple wives is part of on, routine hold on, hold on, hold on. you've never heard of that right hold on, hold on, hold on. yeah i've heard of that you ever heard of, I, I think i told you about that yeah so men want like maids so here's not the partners thing. I, even is that what i'm with, hearing be, be beyond that extreme okay. let's just scale it back i was triggered <laughs> I, i'll put it like that yes they do okay but be let's let's scale it all the way back to to men that have been broken period mm -hmm. want to deal with the type of broken women that don't challenge their own brokenness that don't mirror their own brokenness in a way that challenges them but rather caters to their broken in a way that makes them feel superior mm -hmm. or allows them to avoid or escape mm -hmm. um what they need to do to step up as a leader and so i mean we've we've heard it all before there i mean can we go there? Yeah. yeah. On this podcast? Please. Yeah. Okay. I know what she's going to say. Go. Okay. Go there. So there have been a lot of uh, men that said, you know what? I'm not even going to deal with black women. They got attitudes. They talk back. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, or American women or in general, Africans. Mm -hmm. I, I was told when I married my wife, when I first got with her, there was one of the ladies in the church saying, you let your daughter, oh, no, you let your son, I'm sorry, you let your son marry an American woman. <laughs> How can you do that? Mm -hmm. she, would do, she would divorce him mm -hmm. because there's this understanding that, hey, look, American women are difficult. They run to divorce and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And so while there may be some truth to some of the things that they're saying, the idea is that connect yourself with the type of woman that provides the least resistance as possible. Mm -hmm. That would be the most acquiescent to your your issues, to 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 abuse, mm -hmm. like that will stick with you no matter what. Mm -hmm. And historically, even in the African homes, I don't care what the dad did mm -hmm. mama stand with him mm -hmm. and so that's this idea like go across the seas because you're not going to find a person that's going to stick it out in the marriage in mm -hmm. america so it's this idea like i love that you said that man in scriptures it tells us that jesus christ died for his church while we were yet sinners so mm -hmm. we're dealing with a problematic situation and jesus leaned into the problematic situation yeah. and that is the challenge for the leader for the disciple hey are we are we looking for the least resistant yeah that mm -hmm. makes us less like jesus yeah so I, go ahead yeah yeah and, I, and, I have a question with that though okay. yeah because i wonder if someone could hear you say that and be like oh so you're telling me i'm supposed to just go after difficult women then mm -hmm. right so what is what is what is the wisdom what like practically speaking if he's supposed to reorient even his pursuit of a woman or t have a type, what is he supposed to do if not to go after women that you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, what I'm yeah. saying, what, what I, I think, great question. I think don't hinder who God really has out there has, 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 what am I trying to say? Don't hint, don't hinder or stop the, the person that God really wants you to be with because you're looking for something easy. Mm. One, because marriage is not easy. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. A lot of times we say we want to be sanctified. We want to be made in the image. Of, we want to be conformed in the image of Jesus Christ and not really realizing that God is going to take the most intimate relationship to do so. Mm -hmm. And so when you look for a yes woman, what you're saying is I don't want to be like the son of God who came to love a difficult church. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Because the church, we're we're a mess, right? But God is committed to us. And mm -hmm. so if you want to go out there, and, and so and this is the reason why a lot of men end up marrying somebody who's a maid but not a friend. Ah, ah, Bro, ah, I'm gonna I'm, 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 throw something your way and I want you and to answer the, that. This, this <laughs> is the reason why she's, she's washing your clothes. She's doing everything that she, you want her to do. But you don't want to talk to her. She's, she's, she, yeah. she, 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 she easily <laughs> irritates you because you don't even like her. That's what I want to get to. Thank you for going there. You don't even like her. Bro, I've talked to several married men who told me that they don't like their wives. I asked them, well, no. are you at least friends with your wife? And they're like, friends? I bet they do. I bet they do everything for them, though. They do everything for them, though. Can I say something? You make enough, <laughs> make enough money to marry a maid. I mean, to, to, to hire a maid, I mean, and, oh. and then mar marry a friend, right? Wow. If you want, if, you, if that's what you want. And so what you really want is somebody to cater to your egos. And your brokenness. Your brokenness. Yeah. 
because you didn't get that to Jesus. Woo, go ahead. Go, sis. Can, we say, can I say yeah. something? <laughs> um, I have thought it a bit interesting that I, I, it does seem like some men enjoy men more than they enjoy women. But they they marry women because they're supposed to. But their affections, their time, their yeah. energy, their vulnerability yeah. is giving space for for men mm. more than so. That that's a thing. There's multiple uh, answers. Like to you that. like hanging yeah. with your buds. Well, some yeah. of them, some of them might be. And I'm not struggling. saying they're gay. I'm not some, saying they're gay. Some of them might be. Yes, for but, sure. But I but but I. I want to, yeah, you want to you tackle that first? I, 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 there are multiple things that are going on there. But I think a lot of times people are, are don't understand that marrying a friend is in, important. Hmm. It's really important to marry someone who can walk with you. Marriage is a journey. Hmm. If you can only tolerate her in bed, if you can only tolerate her to look at her in photos or to touch her physically, you're going to have a hard time dealing with some because you're not going to feel romantic all the time. And I don't care how high your sex drive is. You're not having sex 24 seven. You got to pay bills with this person. You got to raise kids with this person. Mm -hmm. You got to have conversations with this person. You got to walk with God in and out of the, in the, in the ups and downs of faith with this person. If you can't tolerate them to sit down with them, mm -hmm. look them in the eye and say, homie, I, can we just talk as friends? Let's yeah. put, you know, lay our rings down real quick and yeah. just, I need to talk to a friend right now. Yeah. Yeah. If I cannot find that in my home, mm. that's a very tragic situation. That's miserable. That's really oh good. Gosh. But can I, but can I also say this? Um, man, I have so much that I want to say right now, <laughs> but I'm a reeling in. I want to say this too. Like, I, I, I think, I think people don't understand how most like men are, are emotional creatures too. for sure we're very emotional loud, creatures bro. right <laughs> and what happens is when 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 society tells us that we have to look for a yes woman to marry that's not a friend that we can express ourselves to mm -hmm. right and so we look for that in in, in male groups mm. in, in in like and so we, we can it doesn't look overly emotional but right. it is right, mm. right? it's like let me go and vent because i can't do it at home uh. and so this is the reason why i love that i have friends mm -hmm. who who knows i love y'all but y'all don't come before jackie wow y'all yeah. just don't yeah and i know he doesn't come like if, if me and him have plans and then kiana call mm -hmm. i won't even get mad like i know dudes listen mm -hmm. i know dudes who who get mad at each other when they go do things with their wives i'm like if that's not the most what yes nah bro i know like bro man you always but it's never like it's never like overly. Well, you know, that's kind of even the thing where they'll say like you soft because you talking about your wife or, or you, you like yeah you're, or, or you yeah they 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 mask it as oh you you always talking about your wife yeah. or you always caking oh bro you don't want to hang with the yeah. boys it's yeah. like no like we don't even do that with one another no. if if we if we got plans and you be, and you come to me and be like Kiana want to do I'll be like oh I understand. Yeah. Because I know that's your best friend. That's, that's my homie. That's yeah. that's, that's, and, that's and, wife. And, and, yeah. But it's but, but it's it's yeah, more true. than just wife though. Ah uh, yeah. It's their friend. It's companion. Yeah. Mm. Everybody knows you're my friend. Yeah. Mm. And so like I'd rather be with Jackie than any of y'all Negroes. Wow. I thought you was gonna say the other one. <laughs> I was. I would have said it if we wasn't doing a podcast. Uh, right? But isn't that and, and two my friend L, LB yeah. is the same way? Yeah. You're the same way. Yeah. I'm the same way. I don't, you know what I'm saying? And so I think that that mm. like people don't under, I know we beating a dead horse here. People don't understand the significance of marrying somebody that you like. Mm. And when you marry somebody who just only going to do things for you, it just messes up everything. Wow. And and that what is intimacy beyond just there is the physical component which is extremely important and we don't want to d dismiss that but it's also a meeting of the minds if we can't connect emotionally and mentally i think when we talk we look at scripture and we limit it oh and two become one or we we got rings on and we have sex right mm -hmm. it's like so you nah. think that that's that's what god <laughs> that's it well then we're holistic beings it wasn't just talking about sex look at look at scripture jesus said even when he was washing their feet one of the most intimate things you could do he was like now you can call me friend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what was he mirror Woo! what is he mir mirroring? Mm -hmm. The very this is the manifestation of the foreshadow of marriage. Mm. I'm teaching you that this is what this is the goal. Friendship in this intimacy between the groom and his bride mm. is fr friendship is the goal. Mm -hmm. Man. And so when Jesus called them to friendship, he 
It was the elevation. Mm -hmm. He said it's, from it's oneness because <laughs> yeah. most people think mar good. a lot of men look at look at women uh, as a, like an asset to meet their goals, their personal goals, to reach their what they want to do. And it's like no, nah, like the the goal is actually what you said. It it is it is close intimacy, right? Mm -hmm. It is it is it is what Adam saw when he first saw Eve. He the first human words in, recorded in the Bible was a poem. This said last is bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. You should should be called woman because she was taken out of a man. Like he saw somebody that he can love, not somebody who he can like become successful. Well, but right? somebody might argue, but she's my helper though. She she is a right. help. She but well, she is a helper because the 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 ultimate goal is to glorify God, right? right. And so we we we're, we're, we're put together to to glorify God and to give His name glory. And so she was created to help him to help humanity do that. You know, humanity wasn't complete until she came, right? Mm -hmm. But relationships have never been one dimensional. But what, from the beginning of but, time, so yeah. I just want to, to to that would be the argument to but, that. Yeah. But what, but what I, what I was going to say is we mm -hmm. help like we 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 glorify God the most when we are close. Mm -hmm. When we are connected, when we are one, when we are friends, like mm -hmm. when, like when we, when our relationships mirrors Christ's relationship with His church and mirrors Christ's relationship with His Father, they, mm -hmm. they like and love one another. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, if we don't like and love one another, how can we glorify God, who is communal, who always love one another for all of eternity? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, like, yeah, that's good. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I really like that. I like yeah. that. Okay. You got any more questions? Oh, I have a lot, but <laughs> but we 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 running over. Um, I will. I'll ask this. What is your advice to men, or your thoughts? I'll say your thoughts for men who feel sexually unsatisfied, and are starting to consider alternative ways to get that need met. Father, so, father, father. That was the first thing I was going to touch on, but we went <laughs> in another direction. Just <laughs> my concern for men is lust, but. You can mm. go first. It's a lot to be said in this particular area. And we got to be. So I just want everyone to know, all listeners, we, <laughs> we're speaking from the men's perspective. And so I think far too often, because there are, so, there are two perspectives to consider, to attempt to try to accommodate the other perspective, we minimize the necessary perspective of a man when it comes to sex. And we're talking about needs. We, there was an argument that went forth. This a, a, a woman who was a therapist or counselor said, men need sex. And it was a big uproar. <laughs> like men need sex because to a certain extent, it's just like, it's not a biological need. You can exist without it. If you're a single man and God didn't call you to marriage then you don't need sex. But I think what was being missed in that is in a in a loving relationship between a husband and a wife, I think far too often the physical intimacy dynamic that should be should be reverenced in that way is often diminished as this is an extracurricular activity that you like, but it's not that important. It's not that serious. And I think it's disconnected from the emotional side. I think sometimes a woman could say, okay, yeah, I know you, you, you want sex because you're just horny. And maybe sometimes, but in a loving relationship between a man and a wife, that man's ultimate way of expressing that I have, I, my, my desire is for you and I want the most closeness with you is in that function of physical intimacy, of, of just being touched and feeling wanted in a marriage. And I think so many times that's miss, I don't know, it's, it's, not, it's not handled well um, yeah. in conversations. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, when I think about this issue, I think about two things. I got to think about what you just said, yeah. but I also think about just the, the, the idea of lust mm. and how the enemy wants to destroy us by using lust. Yeah. And I think what the enemy and our flesh, our flesh desires good things, mm. right? I think what a man, what a man ultimately wants before marriage and in marriage is intimacy, yeah, closeness, oneness. I think God created us to to want that. I think what the enemy does, he he doesn't create anything. He just perverts mm. emotions, mm. He per perverts desires. Mm. And so when I think about lust, I think. The enemy has perverted our desires 
that were originally pure mm. to make us to, to to try to spiritually and emotionally kill us. Wow. I think men are are attacked with lust to become spiritually and emotionally dead, right? Um, in the sense that that the way we think about hmm. sex and intimacy, a lot of times it's perverted and it's it, it is not it's not natural, yeah. right? Yes. And so so the culture teaches us that that women are objects. Wow. Right, and they are they are they are means in which we have to get a, a, a itch scratched, which is the reason why pornography is so demonic. Yes, because it shows you know, and then it, and, and it's also a prideful thing. I talked about this when we did the whole pornography um, thing. It's 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 men who have been rejected going to watch something, watching men who are not getting rejected, men looking highly desirable by another woman. So wow. it feeds a pride. It feeds. Right, which is a pervert, it's a perverted version of what God in, like desired from us, and so I think a lot of men come into marriage and come into the church with a very skewed, perverted view of intimacy, because the enemy in our flesh has appealed so much to our lust. Right? Wow! And so, one, we have to just rewire our minds. Mm of what the culture and what society has told us about ourselves has told us about women and has told us about how we how how we get these desires because they're not necessarily needs they're mm. desires wow and desires are not evil the way we go about it can be mm. right and so i think that men really need to 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 be discipled in a way to say man what you, what you what you've learned about a woman body and even what you've learned about your own body is ah. wrong jeez it's wrong. Ah, and I think I think oftentimes, <laughs> just like you said, man, it's such a self we we're, we have selfish motives. We come to the table of intimacy and we come we approach like consumers. We yeah. approach mm-hmm. like like carnivores ready to just, you know, to satisfy oneself, but we don't come to the table to share. Yeah. We don't and we don't care. You know, I always asked um this question in my mind to God, like why it just why does it seem like you pair married couples unevenly mm. like you give this man this high desire for sex and you give him a woman or it seems like women just naturally seem to desire sex but want it differently mm. or want it at different levels like why and i think it has a lot to do with this journey and the way he's called us to to approach like well if my wife desires to be catered to to be loved to have kindness poured on her and that is our route then i'm going to love her self-sacrificially and find ways to love her in ways that we're, we can share intimacy and for my wife she has to see that and so when we come to the table we're both coming to the table ready to feed each other not ready to feast off each other mm-hmm. in the sense that in the same way that we have to kind of be mindful that God created our women differently mm-hmm. and we're not going to, we cannot, for, like, why would we be okay consuming sex at her expense? Yeah. Mm-hmm. What, is it sex really desirable? No, it's not. If she doesn't want it? Nope. Like, we, it was like. Well, so, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. But if, but, if, but, if, but if you have been so conditioned by the culture to, to say, man, this woman exists for me to get my physical needs met and for mm. me not to meet her at a place where we both can enjoy each other. Yeah. You're okay with that. Man. Right. Um, yeah. but if, but if, but if you're not okay with that, like your wife not enjoying it deeply affects you. Someone said, and I, I kind of just slightly disagree and I gave my opinion. They said women have been taught by society and the church, which I, I agree with that sex is purity culture you know sex is bad and men need it and women don't need it so what's been happening is women have had these high desires and they've been over time Mm -hmm. gradually suppressed because of doctrines and false ideas that have come about sex that make it feel wrong so when they get to the place where it's time to express they they don't initiate and things like that yeah and so it was the conversation was about initiation and i was like i agree with that i feel like when i've seen it happen many times when people have had these ideas about sex they come to the table and they're just like, well, if it's wrong, then I'm not going to know how to initiate because I've been told it's wrong. Yeah. But I also feel like the other side of that, which I think is more important, is mm. we're exp- all of us, men, I just say it very loud, every man wants his wife 
to initiate sex often. However, I think that the have to have that ex- expectation is to expect a wife to approach sex like a man does. And so we're expecting her to be assertive and lead um, in this particular area, no other area, to assertively lead in an area that they've really been called or more natural, they're natural responders. Yeah, yeah. They respond in love. They respond in kind. So we're like, why don't you just, why don't you, you know, jump to sex? Why don't you just throw it on me? Well, you, you're trying to tell your wife to be a man. However, <laughs> while it is important and while it's good, I think we, we have to train each other yeah, yeah. in a sense for each other. That's to how say, you basically say how are you serving her to, to to not get what you want, but to to meet her at a place to right? to meet her at a place. And so now it's not, hey, I just want you to initiate, but I want you to learn me while I learn you. Yeah. I want to serve you as you serve let me. Let me let me say this too cuz I cuz I She had her hand up for a long time. Because I I I, I, <laughs> he I doesn't care. Oh, I didn't see you, babe. Let me just say this real quick and I'm gonna pass it to you because when I talked about how I talked about how like men like like lust is make, making us uh, uh, the enemy is trying to use lust to spiritually and emotionally kill us. Yeah. I truly believe that. But I I I think my encouragement <laughs> to to women would be don't treat us how the culture has defined us. Mm-hmm. If a man comes to you and you feel and you and you're turned off because you feel like he's emotionally not there or he's spiritually not where you want him to be, treat him like what God says he is. And I think a lot of times in our culture, yeah. men are not men can be built up by women in ways I don't I really don't think that they can. I think that women come all the time with their frustrations and their complaints instead of let me let let me be a a, a, a woman of God in a, in a way that will will, will 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 come to a man and treat him how God says he is mm. and I think you know me and Ezekiel was talking the other day um and we were talking about how like um sometimes when people see our relationships online people say goals yeah and people say this and people say that mm. and it's just like no like we wasn't always the man we were but we are very much a product of a good woman who helped us get to a place, mm-hmm. right? And so what a good woman does is if you love him well in some ways and don't meet him with frustration and encourage him, not by his actions all the time, but 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 treat him like you know like he's the man that God called him to be. I think a lot of men will see a lot of their problematic, you know, issues and he and he can grow. Right. That's good. And so I think, yeah, don't if just because a man acts emotionally dead, don't treat him emotionally dead. That's good. Yeah. I like that. What what I was gonna say is I was just gonna confirm uh that Ezekiel's perspective is valid. Um I was listening to a podcast the other day, uh, by a sex therapist and he was talking about how there are two different desires. Uh, that people don't understand are at play in our sexual relationships, Mm -hmm. which is that statistically more women usually have what's called receptive desire and more men have what's called initiative desire, Mm -hmm. which means that um, we all know this, but men are just ready to go. Right. And so they are prone to initiate because they're ready. But a woman usually has initiative or a receptive desire, which means she's a neutral and it's the man's job to bring her to go. Oof. Right. And so I think I think that is interesting because it, it helps one, the woman not to feel like something is wrong with her because she's not turned on as often as her husband. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's nothing wrong with you. Mm-hmm. It's just that he has to lead you to the place that he's at. Mm-hmm. And so I think that already Ooh. that puts couples in a position of of interdependence, mm-hmm. which I think is what God has called us to. I love yeah, and that. I think it, it it initiates pursuit, right? Mm-hmm. It initiates this picture of a cry of Christ pursuing his church. But if, I think not to interrupt you, I'm and sorry, no, no, okay. but I, I think like me and you were talking about, I think what, what burden that puts on the woman and a good burden Christ, you know, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. Like Christian discipleship has burdens, but I think what burden it puts on the woman is you have to make a decision to respond to the leadership. Mm-hmm. Right. And so I think there's a lot in the yes. Right. Mm-hmm. So if he's trying to bring me and guide me to go if I'm always saying no, I need to ask why, mm-hmm. right? So is it that I need healing or is it that I need humility? 
Oof. And I think when you dig into both of those, then I think that helps us to work through sexual Healing issues. and humi- humility can go a, a, a long way. Yeah. Mm, mm, and we can mm. start getting under these sheets. Hey, <laughs> come on now. And But here's the thing. I was going to say something else. but uh, <laughs> Hey, bro, can I? Because you, you, we talked about this before. I just because the to devil that. want you and everybody bed when you ain't married. Yeah, yeah. They want you I out agree. of the bed when you is That's married. That's what they say. My, my wife has explained. And God wants us to get in them sheets. <laughs> my wife has explained. Sex is like ice cream for her. She's mm. like, she said I the lo- same thing. I was, I was like, Kate. Hey. She's like, I, I enjoy ice cream. I actually love ice cream, but I can't live without it. <laughs> yeah, I'm I like, just, huh? what? Yeah. That makes no sense. That's to literally me. what I say. I say it's like cake. Like when I eat cake, I like cake, but, it's, but I just don't. But eat. it's also, but it's also. It's like it's, water it's, for it's, you. It's, no, <laughs> yeah. It's also like it, it, it. Sex is kind of like water in a little way. It, I need it, but uh, <laughs> y'all just say y'all don't need it. But okay. But but, but what I'm saying is, it's it's not just a, it's not because let's I'm, I'm being literal here. But if cake was in the house every single day, you would be tempted to eat it every single day if you liked it. I'm in this house every single day, <laughs> and you ain't tempted. That's to, funny. To, to you know what I'm saying to get out of them sheets every single day. I have receptive desire. You yeah. have receptive desire, and so there is a there is emotional something emotional mm-hmm. there that we, that we have to kind of like. That's why I said the, the 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 if you have receptive desire, then if you're trying to bring me to go, that means that the the my job, my burden, my duty is to respond to the leadership. You be, you and be. if my response mm. is always no, there is something there that needs to be interrogated. That's all I'm saying. No, no, no. Mm. We've actually grown. So I, I, I praise For God. For sure. Because yeah. I'm, you know. And I think this is the conversation <laughs> that needs to be had because it, it is a twofold conversation because you're talking about responding and reception. But if a man is, is like, so there's responsibility. I, I want to put it like that. There is like you said, word. light bird. There's responsibility for the man to lead and the burden of the responsibilities on that man to lead if she is called to to respond and i think to emphasize hey if he's if he's leading and like what you said if he's leading or if he's trying um i think that needs to be acknowledged with patterns Mm. i would say hey this is this is you leading and this is me responding Mm. what frustrates men is Men are so logical and basic. Mm. It's like, man, I did this, I did this, I did this, <laughs> and I got these results. It's not working. <laughs> that's so you you can't say no after. That's how we yeah. think. Yeah, and because I think uh, I've I've I've, all, <laughs> I've had that feeling so much, especially when I was when I was when I first got married. Yeah. And it's just like no, like one, I I I didn't give you a rem- like. There's no remedy. To make your wife do what you want to do because one, she's nuanced. Yeah. And a lot of times God gives us nuanced women because he wants us to depend on him more. Yes. Right. And so it wasn't until like I stopped looking at these, okay, step one, step two. I think Jackie gonna really like step three. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> exactly. It wasn't until I stopped doing that and said, yes. Lord, yeah, help me. Yeah. Hmm. I don't understand this woman. Yeah. Would you help me? Because you created her. I'm, you can help me. Yeah. Right. And so I think that God wants men to depend on him. Mm-hmm. More than we depend on strategy. Patience and, and compromise mm-hmm. uh, in that area is necessary for men. Because, you know, I, can I be honest? So before when I used to get rejected by my wife back in the day, she didn't understand that now it's different. She didn't understand what the value of sex was to me. And I used to feel rejected. And I used to run to porn as a way to kind of me self-medicate too. from that rejection. rejection yeah. She didn't know I felt like I was rejected. I never cried to my wife until I finally admitted, like, man, I, I feel like you don't love me. I feel like you don't want me. And she was baffled mm. at that idea. And I, I think, like, getting to the place where things can be communicated on the man's part yeah. and also on the woman's part, because if, if we know that men think like this, help them out by kind of sharing, hey, this is just one of those days, and this is why it's one of those days. But also on, on the other side of that, there... This is going to be the most controversial thing that I say. And I, y'all can fight me on it. There may be days that just naturally you don't want to respond. And I think on those days, call on grace for patience. Respond just what? in case. Respond if she doesn't want to. You can't force her. Yeah, yeah, You know yeah. what I'm saying? And you got to be able to understand. Like, there are nights I go to sleep in heat. <laughs> there are some nights I go to sleep in heat because maybe my wife says she got a head cold or she's tired or she don't feel like it or you know she's on you know the time of the month whatever the case may be I have to learn how to build 
Mm. Uh, th- this understanding I'm not being rejected that's number one mm. I love her she loves me and I'm compromised and I'm, I'm, I'm patient and I love her yeah, period yeah. but then on the other side of that because I've been attacked for this or I've seen this attack I've seen this attack before if a woman doesn't feel like it or just doesn't want to in a particular day or instance I think as much as we're calling on grace and we're fighting you know I think on the other side there should be also a fight there that says you know what naturally and instinctively i'd probably say no but i love you so i might do something i might rub your back i might try to do something to let you know that i see you yeah. like yeah I, I think there should be kind of this yeah. i had a friend i had a friend uh <laughs> yeah. a couple weeks ago that said man my wife don't even know like how much i would just appreciate a back rub when i came home i came home and told you i was like yeah he was just like i would just appre-. like she don't even know like a back rub would be like man like, has he told her uh, he told her after I told him to. Okay. <laughs> like, tell her that. She doesn't you know even know why. Yeah. Uh, you know. Um, and yeah, I, I yeah, I, I think men are emotional creatures. Yeah. I think the way we express it looks different, and yes. I think that if 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 people would treat us how they how God says we exist, and not how the culture, I think a lot of men will feel the freedom to come out and bloom, um, and not and won't stay in this coco- in this cocoon. Um, and I think some of it is you have to show us. You yeah. know, cause you, I remember the first time you cried to me, I hated it was, it. you hated it, but I need to, I needed to see yes. it that you were a whole person. Wow. Right. And so, or when we had conversations about, you know, if I did reject you or not even reject you, if I rejected sex, cause I would often say, I'm not rejecting you. I'm rejecting it. Cause I was, it was weird. I was like. She don't want to have sex with me, but she wants to get in the bed and put her foot on my back and talk Like, get to your me. foot off me! It's yeah. like, why we just can't go more? <laughs> put your legs together like, why, more. Like, you, you like me. <laughs> yeah, right. You love me. Can't understand it. But again, receptive desire. Because to me, you wanted to go to 15 when me uh, me touching you and being intimate while walking watching a movie would actually get me to 15 even if it's slower and then they come it would get me there and then they, they, they may take showers and and, and it be they with the women you <laughs> i'm not a pronoun <laughs> <laughs> they be smelling good and i'm like why are you anyway the bay, whole point, bay the with whole, non-scented soap the whole point is is that as you showing us your humanity and explaining your complexities also yeah. allows us to respond to you as you are. And so if you That's only true. project strength, if you only mm. project, you know, self-sufficiency, if you only project like I'm the Hulk, I'm going to treat you like that. Oh. Wow. Well, he, he ain't the Hulk. I'm going to give him some. What? <laughs> what are you talking about? Anyway. I got I to go pick up the kids. <laughs> no, I, uh, Ronnie Shiz. Yeah. Um, so any closing thoughts any anything that you want to say that you haven't said um i want to say that uh me and me and ezekiel we had like a live event the other day and a lot of people well not a lot of people but some young men who are not married uh express the express the fact that they feel like i don't represent single men as well as i do married men or women even and they felt they they expressed how they didn't feel heard by me, and that's just so far from the truth. If you're if you're a man who's heard this and didn't hear me speak up for men, I I really do have a heart for the for the brothers, and I and I and I think um, God is really shifting me to to even targeting men more in, in my ministry, and I and I I just want the man to know listening to this podcast one uh, you don't have to run to the nation of Islam or Hebrew Islamism. Like in the body of Christ, your voice is valued, you are important, and you are necessary mm. to not only the body of Christ, but to a godly woman, uh, a family. Like like we like society needs us. Mm. It just doesn't want us. It needs us. And mm. so you're needed and you're necessary. And so, you know, uh, that's all I want to say. Yeah, I love that. And I, I think... This is my heart to heart for the brothers, man. I think so many times we're misunderstood and we're, you know, we're labeled as men because we we have beards and we, we're at the age of accountability. And sometimes we're gifted, we, we're wise and we have knowledge, some of us. Um, but I think some people underestimate sometimes that the boy in us is unhealed, unspoken to, 
unseen. And I think oftentimes when you see grown men act out in their vices, you know, they're players or, you know, they don't trust nobody or they're violent and they're aggressive. Oftentimes we're seeing um, tantrums from the boy Mm -hmm. has never been seen. That hasn't been heard that had been rejected, that had been abandoned. And it's so, it's so, so easy to call those men out, to critique those men, to judge those men, to blame those men. When what should be happening is instead of looking at those leaves, speak to the root, speak to the boy, affirm the boy, see what God wants to do in the boy. And I think that we're talking about the conversation of value. And this is what that's the part of the the, the man that wants to be disciple, the boy in him that wants to know what it's like to be a man of God Mm -hmm. and how the same way Jesus called children to himself. The only ones that are going with him that are going to be translated into glory is not the preacher. It's not Mm. the poet, Preston Perry. Mm. It's the boy. It's the son. Yeah. Mm. That's my baby. That's 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 my son. And until we get to a place where we're willing to even as married as married people or as sisters in the church or as pastors, if we can identify that boy, speak to speak healing towards that boy, speak growth. Uh, um, you know, rally around the, to support and strengthen and build up that boy. We are no better than the Kevin Samuels. Mm. We're no better than those that are speaking to, you know, that broken place that are exacerbating the wounds instead of tending to them. And I think we have to see it like that. Otherwise, we, we're being grossly dis- dismissive of what these men are really going through. They're, they're not just men that, you know, want six figures and not just men that don't know how to deal with women. They are boys that have not found their way yeah. that, that need direction. Yeah, yeah. And if I could say one last thing, I know we're going over, like, a lot of arguments and frustration happens through social media on certain pages Mm -hmm. and for the for the i want to just address the godly women out there because i know a lot of women listen to this podcast and i want to just encourage you guys to not meet men woundedness with your woundedness like like meet them at a place of your out of out of your out of your your, you 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 being healed by god because i think that we miss each other when we come in, when we when we approach a man of how all the men in our past have wounded, wounded, wounded us, and we don't really see the potential of that man because we're 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 approaching his woundedness with ours, and it's like if you don't look at man through the lens of that, like I think that we have to struggle both men and women to really see the opposite sex how God defines us, um, and so I think when we do that. Um, men and women relationship from a brother and a rom- romantic standpoint which is grow and flourish amen amen Peace. you guys are great one bye hey. good job guys that was a lot.